We want to find the zeros of a function when we're using the notation. This f of x is x, my, x plus 5. We're trying to find the zeros. The zero, what? When f of x is equal to 0, what? f of x is the function formerly known as y, kind of like Prince. Yeah. Not that Prince. Okay, wait. So f of x is formerly known as y, and we're trying to find the zeros of the function. That's why we set this guy equal to zero. Oh, that's all we're doing. That's it. Finish him. What makes that function zero? Minus five. Why? Because when I plug that back up in there, minus five plus five is what? Not even going to answer that. Now, let's go to the harder one. This one. Over here. Come on, come on, come on. You, you, you. Get there. So I set it equal to zero. That's two thirds x minus ten. Then back that math up. So that's ten is two thirds x. Multiply both sides by the reciprocal. And that's three halves times 10 is x. What makes that zero? That's uh, uh, you're a one, you're a five. Five times three is 15. So what's the zero of that function? 15. <laughs> but I do think that it would probably be a good idea to see what this looks like graphically. Bam, here. If that's f of x, we want to know what makes f of x zero, but the function f of x is formally known as y. So what do we really want to know? We want to know where y is equal to zero. So we go and we look at it. Is that there? No. Y is four there. It's there. Boom. When y is zero, whoa, whoa there, five. Mm, yeah. So what makes this zero? That right there. What? The x? Uh-huh. Was x zero? No. Y is zero. When y is zero, that's when we're finding our zeros. Why so much enthusiasm? Just... Prince! We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.